In this episode of Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory, we'll finish up our exploration of the realm of the galaxies and show you how to find these beautiful deep sky objects. Messier 58. Messier 90. And the massive elliptical galaxy, Messier 87. All right, let's go star hopping. Hey, hello, hi, and welcome to episode 20 of Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory. I'm Dave Hearn, and I'm very fortunate to be your host. In this series of programs, we'll show you the most beautiful sights in the night sky and explain exactly how to find them with your binoculars or your telescope. So we're 20 episodes into the Star Hopping series. I'd really like to get your feedback on the show thus far. This is your show, and it's important to us to know that we're serving you as best as we possibly can. Your comments and suggestions will let us improve and allow us to tailor our astronomy content to best meet your needs. So please do take a minute to send us your comments on the show notes at kpobservatory.org sh020 or in the comments section for this episode here on YouTube. We're really thrilled to be here after 20 episodes. Thank you so much for your support of our show. So let's move on to our final episode in this series on the Virgo Cluster of Galaxies. This week we've arrived at the lower, which means eastern, end of the cluster, and we have three large galaxies to show you. Since we're farther down, we'll have a different starting point, the bright second magnitude star Vindemeatrix, located about 23 degrees up in the sky at about 11 p.m. on Thursday, February 18th. So let's check it out. Star hopping target number one. Our first target this evening is Messier 58, a barred spiral galaxy, one of only four barred spirals in Messier's catalog. So let's get started by centering your telescope on Vindemeatrix, the third brightest star in Virgo. Our first move is about four degrees to the upper right to fifth magnitude 33 Virginis. Next, we'll move about a degree and a half upwards to fifth magnitude Rho Virginis. You'll just see 6th magnitude 27 Virginis just to the upper left. So here's another leap of faith, so make sure you can get back to this pair of stars before you start this next move. Move 2 degrees to the upper left and you'll run into our target, Messier 58. At magnitude 9.7, M58 is one of the brightest galaxies in the Virgo Cluster. In smaller scopes, though, it looks similar to the Virgo ellipticals that we've been seeing, showing only its bright nucleus. But in a medium-sized scope of 8 inches or more, it may be possible to spy the central bar that runs in an east-west direction, basically up and down in the sky at this time of year. As a bonus, if you move about 3 quarters of a degree to the right, you may encounter the Siamese Twins, NGC 4567 and 68, two smaller spiral galaxies that are in the process of colliding and merging with one another. After you're done with the Siamese Twins, move back to M58, check it out a bit more, and then prepare for the move to our next target, Messier 90. Star hopping target number two. M90 is a large spiral galaxy extending over 9 minutes of arc in its long dimension, and it glows at magnitude 9.5. The star hop to move from M58 to M90 is a bit difficult. Just over a degree to the upper left lies an 8th magnitude star. Search around a bit from M58 to locate it. Once you have a general idea of where it is, center it in your eyepiece. After you're there, move just a smidge upward, that's a technical term for a quarter degree, you should then be able to view M90 coming into view. M90 was discovered by Charles Messier on March 18, 1781, the same night that he discovered M84, 85, 86, 87, 88, and 89. Quite a night for locating non-comets. I'm sure he would have been quite worried if a potential comet was supposed to pass through this area. So now let's check out the brightest galaxy target in the entire Virgo cluster. Know what it is? Find out right after this. Star 
hopping target number three. Our last target this week is none other than Messier 87, the brightest and one of the largest galaxies in the entire Virgo cluster. M87 is famous for multiple reasons. It has a huge globular cluster system and also has a spectacular jet of turbulent gas extending several thousand light years out from its core, as shown in this image from the Hubble Space Telescope. This galaxy is also a strong radio source cataloged as Virgo A. There is certainly something very strange going on in the core of this massive galaxy. Since it's the largest nearby elliptical galaxy and one of the brightest radio sources in the sky, M87 is a popular target for both amateur and professional astronomers. To find M87 from our current position at M90, we have to make another leap of faith. Move about a degree and a half to your upper right and you'll see the large bright glow that is M87. Visually, Messier 87 has a diameter of about seven minutes of arc and an apparent magnitude of 8.6. M87 is nearly spherical, type E0 or E1 in Hubble's classification, as we learned back in episode 15. It has a very bright circular halo containing an easily seen nucleus. Now we're located just a little below Markarian's chain, so you can move up and start hopping around this set of galaxies we discussed last week, except from the opposite direction. As I mentioned in the first episode of this series, Try to do all these galaxy hops with a friend. It'll make for a memorable observing session as you move through the Virgo cluster together, identifying these island universes together as they appear in each of your telescopes. Well, it's time to review what we've seen. We started off from the eastern and lower side of the Virgo cluster, positioning ourselves on the bright star Vindimatrix in Virgo, and first found the tight spiral M58. Then we did a quick side trip to the bonus Siamese Twins galaxies, NGC 4567 and 68. Then after a dangerous hop to the faint eighth magnitude star, we quickly located the large spiral M90. Then finally moving upwards toward our old stomping ground of Markarian's chain, we located the massive elliptical radio galaxy Messier 87. Well, I hope you had fun in this series checking out the Virgo cluster. As you've seen on the star charts, We've only scratched the surface of this massive area of galaxies. If you've done all these exercises we've outlined here without getting lost, you should be very proud of yourself, as this is one of the more difficult areas in the skies for amateur astronomers. Great job. So that does it for this week's episode. You can find the show notes on our website at kpobservatory.org forward slash sh020, where you can comment and leave any questions that you may have. And as I mentioned at the start of the show, please do give us your feedback on the first 20 episodes of Star Hopping. It would really mean a lot to us and let us fine tune the show so we can better serve you that much better. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you here next week with more Star Hopping tips and tricks. I'm Cassie and I hope you've enjoyed Star Hopping around the Milky Way. We'll continue to bring you these video astronomy tutorials every week on Thursday and in their podcast format on Fridays. They'll be designed to help you find deep sky objects that are up in the sky at the time we post them on the internet. The reason we create these videos and podcasts is to help beginning amateur astronomers learn the sky and get more enjoyment out of their telescopes and astronomy in general. If you have any requests for potential targets in the night sky that you would like to see us discuss, just let us know down in the comments section below, or on our website blog. Don't miss our free field notes for this episode, basically the script of the show, with all the images and start charts we use for our star hopping activities, you can get them for free, at kpobservatory.org slash field notes. If this is the first time you're checking out Star Hopping, and if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking the big yellow button, click the thumbs up on the video, and please share this tutorial out to your friends who like looking at stars. Also, as I just mentioned, please feel free to leave any question or comment below, and we'll be sure to respond quickly. Please follow KPO on Facebook, where we post all of our astronomical digital images, and keep everyone informed about upcoming astronomical events. We'd love to hear from you to discuss all this great stuff up in the sky. All the links to these places in cyberspace including our website, kpobservatory.org, can be found below in the episode notes as well. 
And finally, if you feel this video provides you value, and if you'd like to see more, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where for a small amount per video, you can support our efforts, and help us make even more great astronomy tutorials, just like this one. So bye for now, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory.